Hello, my name is Johannes Reiche from Wageningen University. And in this short knowledge clip, I will provide some background on time series analysis for forest change monitoring. With the availability of dense and high resolution optical and radar satellite time series imagery and some of these archives, for example from Landsat and MODIS dating back to the 1970s, we now have the opportunity to study the pulse of the forest at high spatial and temporal detail. Time series analysis can help us to understand and detect long-term forest changes and dynamics, including different human-induced changes, such as deforestation, extreme climate events, such as droughts and insect outbreaks, but also post-change processes, such as forest regrowth. Having images available every few days also allows us to detect forest changes in near real time. Newly incoming images can be processed and analyzed immediately and we can detect new changes with minimal delay. Such near real time information can support law enforcement activities. But let's take a step back and first compare time series analysis with traditional bitemporal change detection. This image shows a tropical forest area in Guyana, South America and was acquired in the year 2015. The next image was acquired a few years later and by going forward and backward we can clearly identify change patterns. The large scale change encircled in red represents a typical pattern of alluvial open pit mining. In this case in Guyana it's gold mining. The small scale change encircled in white represents logging activities. These two images can now be used in a bitemporal change detection approach to map change. But now let's look at a particular point and see what happens over time. What we see here is the two observations from 2015 and 2019 plotted over time. What is shown is a vegetation index derived from the Landsat data. High values in 2015 indicate high vegetation cover and low values in 2019 after the deforestation event, very low vegetation cover. Bitemporal change detection, such as image differencing, can now be used to map the change between the two images. This is relatively simple and easy to interpret. However, such traditional bitemporal change detection does not allow us to track the precise timing of the change and other forest dynamics. Analyzing the entire time series can overcome this shortcoming. Here we see the entire time series, whereby each of the black dots represents an observation. The black dots are connected to better visualize the time series signal. Analyzing the time series allows us to much better understand the particular dynamics on the ground. For example, we can see fully grown forest between 2015 and 2017. We can detect the time of change precisely in the year 2018 and we can observe post-change dynamics, in this case regrowing forest. This is the strength of analyzing time series over analyzing only few images. You may wonder why there are still only about 35 observations available for the period of five years, although Landsat satellites provide images every 16 days. This is because of persistent cloud cover, which leads to data gaps and a reduced number of observations. And that represents a major limitation of optical remote sensing in the tropics. Radar data can help to overcome that. In addition to the timing of change, also other change and post-change information can be derived, such as the magnitude of change, which perhaps can help to better separate deforestation from degradation, and the recovery speed, telling us something about the capacity of the forest to recover after a disturbance event. It is really important to understand that with satellite time series, we can only track a part of the forest recovery process. Often rapidly closing canopy gaps and regrowing pioneer species result in a remote sensing signal that is similar to that of fully grown forest. Tracking forest regrowth from this stage to old grown forest, which usually takes decades, is harder. To overcome some of this long wavelength radar and LiDAR sensors can play a role. Now let's have a look at a few common time series change detection methods. The first and probably most used type of methods are break detection methods, such as BFAST or CCDC. 
These methods model the normal behavior of the time series and detect abnormal behavior as change. Here we illustrate BFAST, which decomposes the time series signal into several components. Namely a seasonal component, representing the forest seasonality, a trend and a prey component, representing trends like regrowth and breaks like deforestation, and a residual component. Here an example from CCDC, where we see a Lancet time series of a forest pixel that is locked and converted into agriculture. The blue and black line represent the modeled seasonality. The red point represents the breakpoint, which indicates the time of change. Segmentation-based methods, like LandRender, fit segments to a time series of annual observations, and with this detect different change patterns. Other methods include probabilistic approaches. In probabilistic approaches, satellite observations are first converted into forest and non-forest probabilities. Subsequently, change is detected once it diverts from the distribution of a stable history period. Converting observations to probabilities first also enables the simple combination of optical and radar data. Here an example of the application of the BTS probabilistic approach for near real-time forest change detection in Bolivia by combining observations from Landsat and Sentinel-1. To conclude, satellite image time series is a powerful tool that can help us to better understand long-term changes in dynamics in forest and also detect changes in near real time. The selection of time series methods depends on the application needs. For example, a different method might be used for monitoring long-term dynamics versus near real time change detection. Dense and high-resolution Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 time series are now available and provide a rich data source for local to global scale applications.